In the summer of 1914, the Corinthians were once again bound for Brazil on another tour to South America. And it was whilst on the ship at sea that they received word via a telegram that war had been declared back in Europe. To a man, the Corinthians, it's said because of their Corinthian spirit and their belief that there was more to life than just sport, they decided they had to return home straight away to join the forces. They traveled down to Brazil where they canceled the tour, got straight back onto the next boat home. Chris, a little bit of the context there. Expand on some of that and tell us a bit about this voyage that was never to be. Yeah, well, the Corinthians were the original club that took football all around the world. And in 1910, they went to Brazil, where they inspired these five railway workers to set up Corinthians Paulista, who mm -hmm. today are the Brazilian world champions and mm -hmm. incredible club. But in 1914, the Corinthians were again going to Brazil on tour when they discovered that the war had broken out. And so they decided to a man, they had to return home, they had to join up with the army. And so that's what they did. They, they didn't kick a ball in Brazil in 1914. Um, they had to dodge torpedo fire and German mm -hmm. U-boats to make it home. And sadly, that generation that took football around the world, uh, most of them died mm -hmm. in, in the battle. They lost a record number of men for a football club in the First World War. So 100 years later, we decided to take the Corinthians, who are today uh, an amateur club mm -hmm. in Tolworth in Kingston. Uh, we took them back to Brazil to play against the world champions to fulfill the fixtures mm -hmm. that never happened. Well, the, the, the legacy is quite incredible. I mean, a lot of people might not know, but they're kind of the, one of the bastions of English football. They were the only ever team uh, to have been the official England side. The whole Corinthian casuals were the England side. Yeah. They beat Man United by the biggest margin ever, 11-3, is yeah. that right? Um, and they inspired Real Madrid to wear, to wear white. And yet they're now bizarre sort of amateur side in the eighth tier, is that right? Yeah, that's right. It's extraordinary. They've got probably one of the richest histories in all of football. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, as you, and they also, you know, they coined the word soccer and the first ever black player, Andrew Watson, played for them. They're, you know, they're an incredible national treasure, which because they believe so strictly in amateurism, they sort of drop down as the professional game has, has grown. And so today they are a much forgotten little club in, mm. in South London who deserve a bit more light shone on them. So that's what we're hoping to do. Mm. Well, they're not completely forgotten. I mean, the Corinthians in Brazil are very much yeah. fans of the Corinthian casuals over here. We've got a little clip uh, from the film of some of the fans coming over to uh, Tolworth. <laughs> The influence uh, the, this team with my team in Brazil, it's wonderful. I think a little piece of uh, my team in Brazil, here in, in London. Woo, come on, Corinthians, come on! And every time we come here and see everyone and that connection that it has to the Brazilian team, um, everyone cheering, you know, they're cheering English, they cheer in Portuguese. I think that's something that you don't see with any other team around here. I mean, someone that played for the side. This is quite a surreal connection, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Uh, you know, every week we now have Brazilian fans turn up, and <laughs> they, they they come six thousand miles uh, to to come to Tolworth, <laughs> and they take a blade of grass and they're crying as they pick a blade of grass and they say, "I'm going to take this back to Sao Paulo and uh, treasure it." And it's it is extraordinary. Uh, when, when you see the ground, you know, we have maybe 200 fans there, but there's always a pocket of Brazilians. And mm -hmm. uh, we're really proud of that route, and we're, we're proud of that connection. And it's, it's an amazing sort of little gem that, the, that our mm -hmm. forefathers left us. Yeah. And getting back to the film itself, I mean, you've got some incredible contributors. You've got Michael Owen, David Seaman. How did you get them involved? And, and why are they uh, such an important part of it? What's their connection? Yeah, well, I wanted to connect it to, obviously, the, the, the current modern present day football world is obsessed with the professionals and, and with those great players of the, of the modern era. And Michael Owen, for example, he was a, a, a Ballon d'Or winner. Mm -hmm. And the Corinthians, they had some players who were considered to be the greatest players in the world. In 1914, Cuthbert Brisley was considered to be the greatest player mm -hmm. in the world. And he then died in the First World War flying for the RAF. So I wanted to try and sort of, you know, have someone like Michael Owen, mm -hmm. who has been at the top of the game, uh, reflect on the sacrifices that the forefathers made. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you replicated them in the, in the pilgrimage to that 
famous stadium there. What was that like? And, and, you know, in front of, as you say, 200 fans. Um, this is after the game, and that is you there yeah. in front of. Um, we well, say 30 million people watched it all, all around. Well, the world. they claim to have 30 million fans. Mm -hmm. Corinthians Paulista. Um, it was shown. It was actually televised on two national uh, TV stations in yeah. Brazil. Uh, 30,000 were there on the day. So. It was an experience that, that none of us were used to. Mm -hmm. um, walking out and just, just hearing the roar from the crowd, it was, yeah, it really did. Um, it, it was quite incredible. Not that it matters, but how did the game go? <laughs> the game actually was, was really close. Mm -hmm. They didn't score until the 78th minute. They got their first goal after 78. And then they, they did sadly get a couple of others mm -hmm. when we were chasing, trying to get an equaliser. But they were going for it. It was their last pre-season warm-up before a major Champions League final um, mm -hmm. qualification round for them. And they took it seriously. Chris Watney there. His uh, film Brothers in Football is on ITV on the 21st of November.